In this video we'll talk about Apple Sampler's parameters. Probably the most important one is one of the smallest ones and that's root key right here. And the reason for that is because if you're going to play a sample on a keyboard you probably want the notes to match up correctly with the notes on the keyboard. So for example this didgeridoo sound I have is in the key of G sharp. When I play a C on my keyboard it comes out as G sharp. We want that C to be a C so if I click on this I can move my C up four half steps up to A flat and now the notes play correctly. You may need to experiment with this parameter a little bit and you may also need to use the fine tuning control to get it just right. And While I'm talking about this let me show you a quick trick to make this a little easier. You can use Mixcraft's G-Tune Guitar Tuner plugin to show what note is playing. I'll click on effects here and for effect I'll select G-Tune Guitar Tuner and then I'm going to click the edit button so I can see the interface and close this window. And you can see that that's a C. This sound moves around a little bit, but we can pretty much tell that's a C. And if I tune it, you can see that it's going flat. The next parameters we're going to talk about are the volume envelope. There's an attack control which controls the speed of the onset of the sound. And if this is all the way down, the sound starts immediately. And as I turn it up, the attack slows down. And release does the opposite. If the release is all the way on zero, the sound stops immediately when I let my finger off the key. And if I turn it up, it fades out slowly. We talked about the pitch control before. This is a fine tune control. And then over here we have a unique control called rubber. And this bends the pitch of the sound up or down in unique ways. If the control is right in the middle, it's off. But if I turn it to the left, it drops down from higher. And if I turn the control to the right, it comes up from the bottom. Over here we have a filter, and this should be pretty familiar to those of you who've used analog synths before. The cutoff control controls the amount of high frequencies that are let through. Its default setting is all the way up, which means that the sound goes through unaffected. And as I turn it to the left, you can hear the high frequencies are taken off. The resonance knob emphasizes frequency right near the cutoff point wherever it's set at. It's a very familiar sound if you've heard it, so let me turn that up a bit. And if you really turn it up, it overlays something that sounds like a whistle on top of the sound. But at more moderate settings, it gives that familiar whying sound. Now let's talk about the mod wheel section. For those of you familiar with synthesizers, this would be the equivalent of an LFO or low frequency oscillator. And if you're not familiar with them, don't let that scare you. All that means is a slow moving oscillator that's good for vibratos and trills. So we have a speed control right here, and we can select whether this applies to pitch or to the filter cutoff. So let's start with pitch right here, and we're going to put this on a triangle wave, which, which is approximately like a regular vibrato. And when I play a key and raise the mod wheel on my controller, you'll hear the effect. If I switch to square wave, it'll be more like a trill. And of course we can adjust the speed right here as well for something a little more moderate. If we select filter instead of pitch, you'll hear the same modulation but applied to the filter setting. So I'm going to turn the cutoff down a little bit so you can hear it happening. Maybe the resonance up a bit. Finally, we can also sync the speed to host tempo. And even though you can't see it from how the knob moves, when tempo sync is engaged, the speed knob is actually jumping between discrete note values. Down at the bottom we have a few extra controls. There's a monophonic button, which means that Alpha Sampler will only play one note at a time, and every time a new note is pressed on the keyboard, it'll cut off the last one and start a new one. There's a loop button over here if you want to loop a sound, and I'm going to play it really high so it'll go by fast so you can hear it. Then there's a reverse button over here which plays the sample backwards. Here's forward, and here's backwards. Finally we have an output section over here, and this is a master volume, and you probably notice this meter over here, and it's a good idea to keep it right in the middle range here so it's not too quiet and it doesn't distort. And 
And of course, this level will vary depending on what sample you've put in. And finally, we've got a lo-fi button over here, which can kind of give a vintage, grungy sampler sound. Here's without. And here's with.